Welcome to the BF Anderson Technical Report for December the 30th. Patience is the key to success, not speed. Time is a cunning speculator's best friend if he uses it right. This is a quote by Jesse Livermore, a pretty famous investor back in the 20s. Did quite well. He said, after spending many years in Wall Street and after making and losing millions of dollars, I want to tell you this. I never was, it never was my thinking that made the big money for me. It was my sitting. So basically what he is talking about is, is that when you initiate a position in a stock and let's say it rallies, and then you're going to have like a normal reaction to the rally. So you, you really need to be patient and realize that it's a normal reaction. But then again, you don't want to be complacent. And if you have an abnormal reaction, so let's, let's just let's see what's going on with the market. See if things are somewhat normalizing. As you can see here with the NASDAQ, we continue to roll over, rallied, failed to make a new high, came back, made a double bottom, starting to work our way back up the right side. So looking a little better. Here we have the long-term graph. Everything is A-OK -okay here. We kind of came down to the 35-week uh, moving average, closed out a lot of the white space, which is something we needed to do. Mid-caps, things are kind of broadening out a little bit. We're not making new highs on the mid-caps. The only index making new highs is the S&P, so the market is really not broadening out like we would like. Here's the New York Composite, same thing, not making new high, but improving. Here is the small cap uh, index, which is not making a new high. However, you know, barely broke out above this base here, did get hit the hardest. You know, people are just kind of staying away from the small stocks and moving to the big ones. Now, the S&P 500, you know, big large cap index, you can see here, the, that's where the money's going into is the large cap stocks. I think it has a lot to do with fear. Yeah, it could be a temporary thing. We'll see the other if the other indexes catch up. However, on the long-term basis, you can see held up much better than the NASDAQ. Very solid uptrend, broke out to a new high yesterday looks very positive. Now on the aggression index, again, we're comparing technology to toilet paper, toothpaste, consumer staples. We did break below the 40 week, which did give us a sell signal, which is not a positive, tried to rally. So this is kind of looks like it might become resistance a little bit. We'll just have to see, but the, 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 the growth stocks are somewhat in the short term underperforming. Now in our three economic indicators, you can see here interest rates are flat. However, getting back above the 200 day, a little bit of improvement. Oil prices kind of getting a little bit of a move here, a little bit of a spike. Financial stocks along with interest rates are starting to kind of work their way up. New lows, not a big problem. We did get an acceleration of it. Uh, however, yesterday we had 62 above the 40, so we continue to monitor. Now on the uh, uh, AAII bull bear ratio, I went back to their web page and found out that the historical averages are 38% bulls. This is since they started doing the survey. The average is 38% bulls, 30.5% bears. So if we take the difference, we come up with 7.5. So that's the blue line. So the way I'm looking at it is, is that if we're above the blue line, we're getting into a greed situation where people are probably too optimistic. And then if we're below the blue line, we're in the fear zone, which is kind of where we want to be. So just a, a little bit of an adjustment to that indicator, but it's a little clearer, I believe. Now on the put call ratio, basically just drew a line through the middle of the uh, formation. And you can see here again, fear, greed, and we're still in greed, but we, we're not as deep as we were before. As we get into the volatility index, let's see here, volatility index is right here. Uh, the VIX has improved quite a bit. We did get a spike in volatility above 30. We're down now below 20. So the, the VIX is somewhat normalizing. Uh, the, the percent of stocks above the 200 day moving average on the NASDAQ, now we mentioned this 25 area was kind of critical. So it came down and held it so far. So, you know, we've seen this pattern in the past where the market tends to get oversold. It's somewhat of an oversold, overbought indicator. This is on the New York Stock Exchange, same thing. However, I'm using 50%. We came down, broke below it. However, starting to rally again, seeing some improvement there. Okay, here is the yield curve where I'm using the three month versus the five year. A uh, little bit of improvement. We want to see, you know, we want to, we want to see the bankers be able to make money. So right now on this particular spread, we're at 1.21. Where we would get in trouble would be as if we went negative down in this area. Uh, the junk bond market starting to improve. We're seeing the junk bonds versus the treasury bond came down really, you know, started to get in trouble here. 
however, starting to rally. So maybe the economy is going to be okay. Now, what I did here was just kind of take the uh, uh, the Treasury bond, the 20-year Treasury bond, and I compared it to the S&P 500. So I'm comparing bonds to stocks. So since 2021, this particular ratio has been in a very, very strong downtrend. And notice the, the steep decline we're getting here. So if stocks continue to do well and interest rates start to climb, you can see why that is happening. Now, also, I wanted to take a look at, you know, we hear a lot about value stocks or growth stocks. You know, this is the Vanguard Value ETF versus the S&P 500. Now, you can see here at the beginning of the year, now I took June, I put June as the first half of the year. And the first half of the year is where all the outperformance came for the value stocks. And you can see they've really fallen off since. So the first half of the year was somewhat of a value market. Second half is looking more like a growth market. So I did the same thing on energy. Energy outperformed in the first half, in the second half not really outperforming. Uh, on financial stocks, banks, etc. again, got all of its performance in the first half falling off now. So this is a ratio of banks to the S&P 500. Now, also notice here with technology, I, I did a comparison of technology to the S&P, underperformed in the first half, now starting to outperform. So it looks like the growth stocks are starting to reemerge. Now here are the top five. On semiconductor, again, we got a nice gap up buy signal following that 10-day moving average. Got a little bit of a correction in here. However, starting to make new highs looks very positive. We do own the stock. Marvel Technology, another semiconductor. You know, we got a gap up on earnings. Somewhat looking like it was gonna be a round trip failure, but stabilized, starting to move up again. So Marvel looks, looks Looks like you should keep an eye on it. We do not own it at this time. Umbrella, kind of the same thing. We're getting that sideways action, not really breaking out in any meaningful way. I'm continuing to monitor this one. Arista, <coughs> excuse me. Arista Networks. We're seeing here a very positive uptrend here. This is uh, telecommunication uh, networks. Uh, gap up. You know, so somewhat of a round trip. Broke out again. Strong uptrend. We do own Arista Networks. ArcBest, this is a trucker out of Arkansas, a very small company. It's about $3 billion. Uh, you can see here gap up, stabilized, and we got another gap up here the other day, and we'll, I would watch this one in consolidation. We do own ArcBest. So that's it. If you have any questions, please give me a call. Thank you very much.